A few weeks ago I made a video talking about eight horror movies that I am never going to rewatch. So today I thought I'd do a positive version of this and talk about eight movies that I personally think do not get the love and attention that they actually deserve. And this could be for numerous reasons, whether that be that just people just aren't talking about these movies anymore or that they never actually got the attention to begin with and they flew completely under the radar. We all have movies that we wish more people would go and watch and this list just happens to be eight of mine. If you're new here I go by Hordes and I talk about all things horror here on my channel on Mondays and Fridays and please feel free to leave me recommendations down in the comment section down below for movies that you think deserve more love and attention because I will go away and look at them all because that is what I've been doing with every recommendation that I have been left so far here on my channel and it's how I found some really cool and interesting movies. So without further ado let's crack on number one. Moon Garden from 2023 is a dark fantasy horror starring Argie Doon, Brianne Davis and Haven Lee Harris directed by Richard Stephen Harris. When five-year-old Emma has a terrible accident and slips into a coma she finds herself thrust into a darkly surreal industrial dream world Haunted by a nightmarish spectre that feeds off tears, she must follow her mother's radiostatic voice to find her way back to consciousness. Moon Garden was my number one horror movie of 2023 and I didn't hear a single other person talk about this movie. That's how under the radar this movie flew and it is possibly one of the most beautiful surreal horror films that I have ever seen. The entire thing is shot on expired 35mm film so it's got texture and colour gradients because the film is expired that wouldn't normally be there. It's then got this like static soundtrack that it mirrors the, the textures that you're seeing. It's just visually it just keeps on giving for the entire movie and what I love is video games have been a massive part of my life since I was like seven years old and this feels like if you took the video game series Psychonauts and Little Nightmares and merged them together you get Moon Garden from 2023. It takes the way that everyday sights and sounds are viewed and puts them through the perspective of a five-year-old child but rather than making everything like bright and colourful it does the reverse and it flips it on his head and everything is then grounded in fear and the unknown and whether you choose to fight that fear head on or run away from it, it is one of the most unique things that I have ever seen and I want absolutely everybody to go and watch this movie because nobody is talking about it and that makes me so sad because I really think that this movie deserves a hundred percent more love than it's actually got. Please, pretty please! You can expect stunning cinematography, dark fantasy for fans of Pan's Labyrinth or even Tideland and a whimsical dark journey through a child's imagination back to consciousness. Number two. Dave Made a Maze from 2017 is an adventure horror comedy starring Mira Rohit Kumhani, Nick Thumb and Adam Bush, directed by Bill Watterson. Dave, an artist who has yet to complete anything significant in his career, builds a fort in his living room out of pure frustration, only to wind up trapped by the fantastical pitfalls, booby traps and critters of his own creation. Ignoring the warnings, Dave's girlfriend Annie leads a band of oddball explorers in on a rescue mission. If you have ever felt that your life has become stagnant and nothing that you do is changing it but everybody else around you seems to be moving on and having success then Dave Made a Maze is a movie for you and it has some of the most amazing discussions about mental health that I have seen in anything and this this is a horror comedy. It is one of the most unique looking horror comedies or horror movies in general that I have ever seen and it is a low budget movie that doesn't feel like a low budget horror movie. It's used its budget and made incredibly smart decisions and whether you are somebody like me who loves their horror movies to be really gory and violent or whether you are somebody that doesn't like gore and blood you will like this movie because how they have managed to do this movie is incredible. There isn't a single drop of blood in this 
but it does not distract from the movie in any kind of way. They just got creative with how they were gonna use it. We have an arts and crafts emergency. You can expect a magical death labyrinth of cardboard, some incredibly heartfelt moments, some witty, clever comedy, and a minotaur. Number three. The Greasy Strangler from 2016 is a slasher horror comedy starring Michael St. Michael, Elizabeth de Rossi, and Sky Elabar, directed by Jim Hoskins. Father and son, Ronnie and Brayden, run a walking disco tour along Los Angeles. When a sexy, alluring woman comes to take the tour, it begins a competition between father and son for her attention. It also signals the appearance of an oily, slimy, inhuman maniac who stalks the street at night, strangling the innocent, soon dubbed the Greasy Strangler. I swear, I just heard my girlfriend fall off a chair laughing somewhere at the fact that me of all people has decided to put the Greasy Strangler from 2016 on a recommendations list. <laughs> like, this is my wild card entry, I will say that. And I've told this story here on my channel before, and that is, when I first started to get to know my girlfriend nearly two years ago now, this was the movie that she recommended me to watch. And for the longest time, I actually delayed watching this movie. Like I'd known her over a year by the time I actually watched this movie. And it is safe to say that it has lived in my head rent free ever since. If you like Peter Jackson's old gross out movies, then you will probably like The Greasy Strangler because it lives in that weird space between gross out and hilarious. Like you will spend half of your time cringing so badly that you have six chins while trying not to laugh. It is the wildest, grossest thing that I think I've ever seen and I will never be able to look at a grapefruit in the same way ever again. Fruits on a go, go fruits. You can expect Grease, grease, and more grease, innuendos, hilarious deaths, the wildest experience in a car wash, all pink everything, and so, so many knee socks. At the time I'm filming this, Michael St. Michael, who plays Big Ronnie in The Greasy Strangler, was taken into hospital at the beginning of March, and there is a GoFundMe currently live to help pay for their medical bills, as they are currently unable to go to conventions to help pay for this. If you would like more information or you want to help, I will leave that GoFundMe link in my description bar down below. Number four. Trailer Park of Terror from 2008 is a zombie horror starring Nicole Hiltz, Lou Temple, and Jeanette Broxt. Directed by Stephen Goldman, six troubled high school students and their chaperone, an optimistic youth minister's pastor, return from an outdoor character building retreat in the mountains. During a raging storm, their bus crashes, hopelessly stranding them in the middle of the trucker's triangle, a forgotten locus of consummate evil in the middle of nowhere. The hapless group seek shelter for the night in a seemingly abandoned trailer park where they find down the road. However, when the sun sets, the terror finds them in the form of Norma, a damned redneck reaper who dispenses vengeance and death aided by her cursed companions, a bloodthirsty brood of undead trailer trash. Trailer Park of Terror is actually the first of two zombie movies on this list, and they could not be more different if they tried. Trailer Park of Terror happens to be based on a comic book of the same name as well. It is gory, it is over the top sexy, it doesn't take itself seriously in any kind of way. It feels like an 80s cheese movie and I mean that as the biggest kind of compliment. This movie is what happens if you make a deal with the devil and then accidentally turn the entire trailer park into high functioning zombies that need constant babysitting. You guys are in a crisis. I'm on my way. You can expect a survive the night kind of plot, a zombie playing an electric guitar on top of a trailer, every single character being a comedic stereotype, and some gory, gory fun with a turkey carver. Number five. Chuck Steele, Night of the Trampires from 2018 is a stop motion horror comedy starring Mick Mort, Jennifer Saunders and Paul Whitehouse, directed by Mick Mort. It is 1986 and Chuck Steele is the best damn cop on the force according to long suffering boss Captain Jack Shit. 
When the governor of LA decides to reduce the licensing hours for clubs and bars, it triggers a sudden inexplicable spat of high profile disappearances within the city. When going to interview the victim at a hospital, he is confronted by a crazed old man who introduces himself as Abraham Van Rental, who warns the disbelieving Chuck that an evil scourge is about to descend on the city of Los Angeles. The scourge of the Trampires. Holy crap. Is this movie fun? And I even have a whole spoiler free review of this one up here on my channel. And the best way that I can describe this movie is it is both an homage and a parody to every 80s action, 80s cop movie that you can think of, all thrust together, meets Wallace and Gromit crossed with South Park. It is wild and it is laugh out loud hilarious. Stop motion horror is not something that you often see in adult horror and this is such a treat and Mike Moore who is the man behind this movie not only directed it he also wrote the movie and he is the voice of multiple characters in it like this guy is genuinely genuinely talented and I have been so fortunate to have comments on my review both from Mick Moore and from people who worked on this movie who have said what an amazing time working on that movie was, which makes me love it even more. I'm adorable! You can expect every single 80s cop trope that you can think of rolled into one man, explosions, the wildest descent of monsters you've ever seen on a city, a giant, giant parrot, and an amazing 80s hard rock soundtrack. Number six. I Am A Hero from 2015 is a Japanese zombie action horror starring Yoi Azumi, Kitsumi Aramura, and Misami Nagasawa, and directed by Shinsuke Sato. 35-year-old assistant manga artist Hideo leads an unsatisfying, tedious life. To cope with the day-to-day -day stresses, he fantasizes scenarios that he has to overcome using confidence and bounce of courage. And yet, when the virus outbreaks hits Japan, turning the infected into mindless cannibals, Hideo is forced back into reality. Equipped with his shotgun and miss seemingly unsurmountable odds, now is his chance to rise to the occasion and become the hero he has always daydreamed that he could be, even if it kills him. I first heard about I Am A Hero and before it was even a movie, it started out, and it still is, a manga series with multiple omnibuses and this movie takes its starting position as a manga and fully embraces this as Hideo is a manga artist and this movie just embraces where it came from and I love that about this movie but it also Every now and then you find a zombie in a movie that you just would not want to come up against because you just know you would be dead. And this movie has the perfect example of one of those zombies and it has a zombie in it that would absolutely fuck everybody up. And it's amazing. <laughs> but the real reason that you should watch this movie, the end 30 minutes, I watched with my jaw on the floor because holy crap does everything go down in the last 30 minutes of this movie and it does not give up until the end. It is insane and I would re-watch this movie again and again just for that end 30 minutes. Zombies are like eating everyone! You can expect an incredibly likeable main hero, some incredibly smart and lucky decision making, a relentless fight scene, and one of the best solo zombies I have come across in a long time. Quickly though, I was actually asked to be a guest on the Undead Symphony podcast back in February, and this was the movie that I actually picked for us to sit down and discuss. So if you are interested, I will leave a link to that podcast episode down below. Please go and check it out because Darren and Michael are two of the nicest guys that I have met in the horror community, and they watch so many zombie movies. We're talking over 150 different zombie movies from all around the world. They will watch absolutely anything, including pro wrestlers versus zombies, which I have still not watched. So thanks to Darren and Michael for that recommendation. Moving on to number seven. 
American Mary from 2012 is a body horror slash revenge horror starring Catherine Isabel, Antonio Cupo, and Tristan Risk, directed by the Sorska sisters. Broke student Mary Mason grows disenchanted with medical school and the doctors she once idolised. The allure of easy money sends a desperate Mary through the gruesome world of underground surgeries and soon finds they leave more marks on her than the clientele. American Mary is a near perfection exploration of the relationship between trauma and body modification because it's actually been proven that people who experience trauma at a younger age are far more likely to have body mods like tattoos and piercings. Now while this movie does focus on extreme body modifications like subdermal implants, tongue splitting and even voluntary amputation, it has clearly been done through the lens of people who love and embrace this subculture. It has a very valid and very important message about how people personally deal with trauma and how the people that we surround ourselves are compelled to act in positive and negative ways in order to help people. Now, it doesn't shy away from this in any kind of way. And yes, this can be a difficult watch at times, but it is 100% worth it. All the effects as well in this movie are practical and most of the people that you actually see in this movie who have body modifications, that is their actual body modifications and I love that. You have a fondness for tattoos. You can expect a hard hitting plot, some great practical effects, some blood and gore that does not in any way overshadow the plot but in fact enhances the plot and a love of extreme body modification and Beatrice. Beatrice is possibly one of my favourite characters that I have ever come across and I love her so much. Number eight. Girl House from 2014 is a slasher horror starring Ali Cobrin, Adam DeMarco and George Carroll, directed by John Noughts and Trevor Matthews. Desperate for tuition money, college student Kylie moves into a house that streams content to an X-rated website. After a deranged fan determines the house location, she finds herself in a terrifying fight for her life. Why this movie does not have a much larger fan base is baffling to me. And if this movie had come out five years later, it would have been much more popular. We're talking a house of consenting cam girls, positive LGBT representation, and a bullied child that grows up to become the dictionary definition of an incel. It feels like a classic slasher, but made for a more modern audience. And what makes this different to a lot of slashers, in my opinion, you actually grow to like the girls in this movie. You find out who they are, you spend time with them, they have personalities. They're more than just, here is throwaway person number one, here is throwaway person number two. But at the end of it, I was actually invested with this. And as a viewer, you are watching everything unfold within the house at the same time as everybody else who is viewing everything through their webcams. Camera's still on. You can expect fun slasher deaths unique to the house, a story that is even more relevant now in 2024 than when it came out in 2014, and some really likeable characters. So there you have it, the eight horror movies that I think deserve more attention than they actually get. If you would like to leave me your recommendations, please feel free to do so down in the comments section down below. If you have seen any of these movies, I would love to know what your thoughts and opinions are on them. And I will be back on Monday to finish the Reanimator trilogy because, oh boy, did I fall a little bit in love with my new boy Herbert West this year. So until next time, bye. <laughs>